This is this is day 354, considering linguistic habits. I'm not sure why I find this so fascinating, but it is interesting to consider linguistic habits and why we use them. I'm always conscious of things we do without thinking, such as a common or trite phrase that we repeat, we repeat frequently. I did some rare in-person shopping today. I needed to buy a few things and could not wait for the shipping. I visited three places, a department store, a pharmacy, and a grocery store. In each scenario, the same linguistic habit, habit occurred. After the total was reached at the cash register, the cashier repeated the total and said, for today. For example, they said, that will be $216.35 for today. I think I've heard this same phrase many times in the past and hardly even noticed. I thought, I wonder if there was a training course for cashiers at these stores where they told them, be sure to end with for today when giving a price. Does the customer ever ask, would the price change tomorrow or maybe next week? I started pondering this today and came up with some kind of hypothesis as to the root cause of this rote phrase. It seems to me that this phrase is used as a softener. That will be $35. Pay now. It seems abrupt and has finality to it. When the cashier adds for today, it seems to indicate that there might be another day and that this will not be the last of our encounters. The cashier is signaling the end of this brief encounter and doing so in a way that indicates a degree of politeness. Perhaps the reason this is so common at department stores is a cultural phenomenon. When you hear other people use the phrase, you naturally start to pick it up as well. Maybe my grandmother, who worked at Harris's in downtown Riverside many decades ago, was the, was the one that first started this trend, and then it just snowballed. Well, we'll never know. Then again, there's also another likely candidate a marketing campaign by a retailer that was pushing temporary discounts for specials that were today only. So naturally, people would end the final total with special emphasis. This is 1999 for today, as if to indicate that on this special day, you got a discount. This seems like a good candidate, and perhaps this marketing campaign has influenced cashiers forever and into all eternity, to use the phrase for today. I think this idea of linguistic habit is important to consider because without knowing it, you allow phrases like this to enter into your vocabulary. <coughs> you might be representing a phrase constantly and not even know it. Writing every day has really caused me to really understand how much I really use the word really to add emphasis. It is really, really annoying. The word really does not even really add anything to what you are saying or trying to say. For the most part, I've learned to remove that word from my writing altogether. Adverbs are commonly misused and overused in our everyday speech, and that spills into our writing. So while we're on the subject, we can talk about interjections. So is one of the ones that I use all the time. An interjection is usually used as a shortcut to aid tra in transitions between subjects. The shortcut is poor grammar, and if you are not careful, you will find yourself repeating this constantly and adding other meanings, meaningless words as well. So anyway, if you need to say something, the general idea is that you should state exactly what you mean with succinct and precise language. This is an unreachable ideal, of course. However, I find it interesting that this ambition seems to have fallen off the radar in modern society. When I was a child, this was a high standard for which we all were trying to achieve. Learning new vocabulary, vocabulary and learning how to properly use the language were ambitions that seemed very common. However, nowadays we are mesmerized by sound bites, clips, and memes. In my first year of college, I had an English teacher who would assign a paper and ask you to turn the paper in the next day. When you bring the paper in, she quickly scanned through the writing. If she saw one issue, she would slash a red mark through it and say F and tell you to try again. The process continued repeatedly until you finally got an A. This method of instruction was quite intimidating, but I will say that I learned more about writing during that semester than all my years of previous schooling combined. She was from the old school, where language was considered to be precious, and we needed to be good stewards of the language we chose to use in our lives. I still remember the day when I gave her my carefully typed paper and watched her read through each paragraph. Then with a shrug, I turned, she turned the paper back to me and said, A. That moment stuck stuck with me. It wasn't just about getting the A. It was about understanding the value of words, of crafting language carefully and deliberately. I remember feeling a strange sense of accomplishment, not because of the grade, 
but because I realized I had written something that mattered, something that took a great deal of effort to get right. It made me think about how often we overlook the words we use every day, like for today at the cash register. We hear them, we repeat them, and we adopt them without question. They become part of our verbal habits, the background noise of our interactions. And perhaps that's fine for some moments, but I think it's important to pause and reflect on what we're actually saying. What do our words communicate about us? What do they reveal about the world we're part of? Language is one of the most powerful tools we have. It shapes our thoughts, our relationships, and even our identities. But like anything powerful, it needs attention. It needs practice. I think back to that old school teacher with a red pen, and I realized that she taught me what she taught me wasn't just about writing well. It was about being intentional with my voice, with how I present myself to the world. So now when I catch myself overusing a word or relying on some tired phrase, I try to correct it. Because at the end of the day, words are all we have to communicate who we are. And maybe it's worth putting a little extra care into how we use them.